Yeah, well, for years, Ryan Taylor would tell his mom that he didn't think he was going to live a long life. It was just a weird kind of premonition that he had, but his family never really realized that it would end the way it did. Uh, Taylor, who is from York County, he died last year at just 21 years old from a Xanax overdose. That Xanax contained some fentanyl, which of course is a very powerful, deadly opioid that we're seeing a lot more now. Now his mother, Mary Brown, is doing what she can to keep his memory alive, starting a scholarship in his memory here at Youth Challenge of Hampton Roads. It's a local faith-based addiction treatment program for adults here. She says she just wants to give other people the opportunity that she so desperately tried to get for her son. Ryan um, was an absolute joy to raise. I mean, just the funnest, funniest kid ever. Started telling jokes probably before he could even speak full sentences. Always dancing, silly, happy, um, just, a, just a joy to raise. Around the age of 15 or 16, um, Ryan started showing a few signs of um, depression, anxiety. I recently read his recovery journal from the, when he was in rehab, and he said that when he was around 16, he started smoking weed. He was 17 when he went to college, and he just, his recovery journal explains it well. He got wrapped right up into the wrong crowd. We started noticing some th things, definitely with his grades and things that were not characteristic of him. Um, so um, we had him go to rehab at um, the end of his first year. Okay. And um, he would subsequently go back to the same rehab two more times. And he was addicted to Xanax. And then the third time he went to rehab, they suggested that he go to a sober living facility. He ended up moving in um, uh, to a house that was supposed to be structured and wasn't and all the other guys in the house were all using. And I said, go ahead and get your things now. Let's go ahead and get you over to Youth Challenge. And he said he would wait a few more days before so he wouldn't do his job wrong and go ahead and put his notice in with his job. And I could pick him up on Tuesday and bring him And Tuesday never came. He passed away January the 20th of 2019. He was 21. We were actually in Hampton to celebrate um, a family member's birthday and uh, the ring doorbell that we have showed an officer on the ring. And I just told her I couldn't come to the door at the time, but I could see somebody behind her. I'll just take him back to where he lives and and she said, well, that's not your son. And um, I said, I just knew. I said, did he die? And she said, yes. I just want people to understand that it's real. It's, it, it, it can happen to my child. It can happen to anybody. And that people need to be able to sit down and talk with their children. We knew as a family that this bright, shining star could not be forgotten. So wanted to do a scholarship to have his name here. He would say, somehow I want my story to help others. But as a family, we didn't know we were going to do it without him.